I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about they start missing you when. Okay, so a lot of times in our connections, people need space, or they want more space than you do. And when we're in a situation like this, it can really be confusing and it can really hurt because you start to think about all kinds of things. Do they care about me? Do they miss me? Do they really like me or are they not interested? And so we get really anxious in these situations. And I'm going to talk about this today. And this is a really good video for anybody that's in a situation that you're dating somebody and you're not understanding why they're wanting space, a breakup, even problems in a relationship. There are times when people want space from you or you need to give them space so they do miss you, okay? Because what happens is when we feel a disconnect from that person, the person we're bonded with that we really love and care about, it often feels like our life is being threatened. We really feel like we're dying inside. And that is because of the way human beings are made, the way we are wired to connect and bond with our loved ones. And so when we feel that space and that distance, we start to get really anxious. And it's often that anxiety that actually hurts our emotional connections because we become really self-absorbed and selfish when we feel anxious. And I've talked about this for years. Even when I started the channel, I had a video called uh, The Real Reason Relationships Fail, and it goes into details. So it's a really good video to go back and watch because when you feel space, if you're insecure and you have attachment issues and insecurities, you're going to want to overcompensate and fill that space. But oftentimes, what that does is make the other person feel turned off and they lose attraction for you. And depending upon how much anxiety you have and your behaviors, the more unattractively you act, the more you're going to turn them off. This is why I constantly say work on your attachment issues. This is why we have the creative healing course in the workbooks. It's all about getting confident and learning how to be a better partner, which keeps the attraction strong and your connection stronger. So if you're in a situation where you're not in contact with somebody, but you're constantly thinking about them, uh, wondering about them, longing to connect with them, that's normal. That is the normal thing that a human being experiences when their connection is feeling disrupted, okay? And so one of the hardest parts of being in a situation like a breakup or when you're, in, you're struggling in your romantic relationship, there's a disconnect, you're fighting, is the uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty, okay? And our brain doesn't like uncertainty because all of that uncertainty feels like looming death in a way, right? So because the other person is often acting cold in this particular situation, um, let's say you're in a breakup and they're acting cold, they're mean to you, they don't want to talk with you, they're short with you, they're saying hurtful things. It really comes across like they don't care and that they're never going to care again, right? That's the big struggle is will this turn around? Can this turn around? And in an effort to have that uncertainty uh, answered, we do things, we get pushy, but you can't do that. This is why we teach what we do because you want their feelings to change, of course, and there are no guarantees that an ex will come back, right? There are no guarantees that they'll give reconsideration to your situation or they'll come back. Of course, there are no guarantees and every situation is so different. But 
Feelings do change. And I've said this for years because it's so true. Feelings change like the clouds that move across the sky. But you have to allow those clouds to move across the sky. You can't expect somebody's feelings to change immediately. And they're likely going to get more adamant with their feelings and pushing you away when you're pushing them to do what you want and instead of allowing them to uh, come to these things naturally. But it gets really confusing because you're like, well, how long should I wait? What does your waiting look like? Because waiting can look like different things for different people. And how do you navigate that? Some people are like, I don't want any hope. Stop giving me hope because hope just keeps me stuck. That's not the way I see hope. Many people can use hope to motivate them. That's the way I look at it. Imagine you got one more chance to repair things with your ex. How motivated are you going to be to change and to prepare yourself for that situation? Okay, think about it. Even if they don't come back, you're going to be a lot more healthy, you're gonna be a lot more centered, and you're gonna be a lot more likely to attract somebody new. However, if you have this mindset of they're never gonna come back, most of you, if you're honest with yourself, are not going to truly commit to personal growth. And I know this because I've done thousands of calls over the years and in email coachings, and I've done this for a long time. I know what keeps people motivated and it's staying hopeful and optimistic, okay? Some of you may be in the rare situation where you're like, well, being hopeless keeps me motivated. But I really think if you just have this mindset of over-preparing, staying focused, on personal growth, healing, not just watching no contact videos, which many of you do, you'll be in a much better place, okay? Either your ex comes back and you're ready for it, or you move forward naturally and you start dating other people and you get to a great place for them, okay? So get into the habit of doing the workbooks 30 minutes a day, doing my creative healing course 30 minutes a day, and they will change your life. And if you don't believe me, look at the comments that people are doing them. Uh, I promise you, they will help you get more centered, more confident than you've ever been in your life. Just stick to them, okay? Because there's a good chance that as you're working on yourself, they will start missing you. When you have stopped the chasing, stop the insecure behavior, they will miss the bond and the connection that you have. Now, I say every situation is different because it truly is. I'm not you know, necessarily talking about people with extreme personality disorders. Some people are dealing with those kind of really abusive situations. I'm talking about most people's healthy or fairly healthy relationship where they were treated with a lot of love and respect but it didn't work out because of our issues that we don't understand, right? I wish they taught this, kid, this stuff in school, but they don't. I had to learn this stuff through a lot of hard work, a lot of making mistakes, a lot of research, and being absolutely passionate about what we do. So I've got a great email coaching today. You're gonna hear a story of the process that I see often behind the scenes when I'm doing my calls every week. These are the things that I start to see. And you'll see how the ex, the dumper, starts missing this person, okay? So uh, this is a couple from the, uh, in their early 30s, okay? They were around the same age. They said, hi, Coach Craig. My ex and I had such a great first year together. We lined up in so many ways. We laughed a lot. The chemistry was the most incredible I've ever had. I really thought we were gonna get married and have a life together. How many of you are in a similar situation to this, where things were great at first and then it slowly falls apart? And that's about the connection. In many ways, our mental health, our attachment issues, uh, our inability to understand how to have a healthy connection. We make mistakes, we do things that turn them off, they do things that make us scared, they do things that turn us off, the more we minimize those things, the stronger the connection will be. Our friends and families got along great. 
Her family all, all really seemed to like me and included me and my family did that with her. We moved in together after about a year. After living together for about six months, we got a dog. Everything seemed to be lining up well. After about six months of living together, I think our issues started coming out. This happens is what we tell you guys. Attachment issues come out, right? We all grew up in different kind of homes, different kind of parents, different kind of parenting styles, and that impacted our blueprint for love. And I'm trying to help you get a healthier blueprint for love, right? I didn't realize it at the time, but we both have our attachment issues. She needed a little bit more space than I did. During the week, she would want to have a little bit more time by herself, like reading books and going to her book club. And when I didn't have my own plans, I'd just be at home waiting for her. So think about it. What do you think is gonna happen? She's out having a good time, enjoying her friends, doing this book club. He's at home ruminating over her, kind of thinking about her, obsessing about her. And in time, things are gonna get unbalanced. When she got home, I'd be so eager to connect. When she was tired, it would occasionally lead to an argument. She'd want to go out with her friends occasionally, and when she did, I got my feelings hurt, especially if she made plans on the weekend. Okay, you have another situation here. What do you think is going to happen? She's going out with friends. Doesn't sound like he's really enjoying himself and has his own identity in life here. And it's going to go bad because he's constantly thinking about connecting with her when she's off naturally just enjoying time with friends and family. She's going to come back kind of feeling good and refreshed and he's going to be like maybe coming on eager and too strong here. I would text her while she was out. Where is she? When is she coming home? I'd make her feel guilty and then I'd be passive aggressive when she got home. I know that it really wasn't her when it came to that because she'd only go out with her friends two or three times a month and often it was just for dinner or girly things. I didn't realize how my anxious tendencies were turning her off, but over time we were less intimate. Yep, you could see he was losing his identity, who he was as a man in this relationship. He was more focused on the connection than her probably was coming on too strong, and that naturally just tends to turn women off. We got into a big fight when we went away for the weekend. I wanted to hook up, but she was tired and said we'd make time the next day. But we had a busy day of sightseeing, and by the time we got home that night, she didn't want to again. I got angry and frustrated, and it led to a big fight. Well, you could see why he'd be upset, you know. She said they'd be intimate the next day. Maybe he's just feeling a little disappointed, but you have to learn to manage these things. This is the kind of stuff that we try and teach you in the course, in particular, is focusing on these things. And a lot of these things you'll see come out in the cartoons in the Creative Healing Course. I threw it in her face that she was being selfish and had lied to me. Well... I could see why you would feel like she lied to you. I think her perspective would be, that's how I was feeling at that time. Like we would, you know, be intimate the next day, but here I am tired, we had a long day, and I'm just not feeling it. And, you know, there are both sides to it. They're both right, but you could see he's being a bit dramatic here, which is probably gonna make her really upset and even less likely to be interested. We got a little distant after that but we were able to repair things. Of course, she was being avoidant and I was being anxious, but I still thought we'd be okay. Around December, her mother had some pretty serious health issues come up. She wanted to fly back home for a few weeks and take her mom to some doctor appointments. I tried to be supportive, but I think she was disappointed when I didn't want to go, even for just a few days. You could see why she'd be upset if mom's got something going on and she's like, I know you can't come all this time because you have work or whatever, but just come with me for a few days. Probably would have made her feel 
like you really cared about her, that you were being more supportive. Now that I've been working on myself, I realize I was trying to punish her for going when I thought she should have waited for her mom's results before going. Okay, so think about this. He's really anxious. He doesn't want her to go. He's, he's being selfish here, right? She wants to go be there for her mom. She's got some health issues going on. She wants to be there for mom. And he's like, no, basically, I don't think you should go yet. You should wait for the results. You could see why she would be frustrated by this. If he was more centered emotionally, he, would have, he probably would have said, yes, let's go be there with your mom. I know this is serious. But even if it, he wasn't willing to go, he would have at least said, okay, I understand why you want to be there. But the anxiety causes us to be selfish, which is what's happening with him. When she was gone, I caused a few arguments. She was stressed and worried about her mom. I kept pushing her to come back sooner and to just go back to her mom in a week or so. You could imagine this did not play over well. Looking back, I'm embarrassed of how I acted. It wasn't terrible, but there were times I, was, I just was angry that it wasn't going my way. While she's there, she got fed up with me pushing her to come home. Yeah, you can imagine. Think about this. Her mom is going through some health issues. She's going to these appointments, probably having testing done. Who knows what's going on there? And he's basically saying, I want you to come home to me. That's not going to go over well. Her mom got bad news with her health. At first, I tried to be understanding. I really did. I sent her mom flowers and a card. Okay. You tried to be a little bit thoughtful there. I could see what you were thinking. Knowing what I know about these kind of situations, it probably would have made your girlfriend mad because she would have been like, she's probably going to be thinking something along the lines of, if you really cared about my mom, you would have con come here to begin with, right? Because <laughs> I've just been doing this for a long time. I know these things. I kind of already see when they're going to happen because I've seen similar patterns to that. I asked her if she wanted me to come, but she said not right now, that everyone was too upset. At one point she said, oh, now you want to come. Just a few days ago, you said that I should come home. No surprise there. She's upset. She's upset because you weren't really being supportive it until you found out that there was bad news, whatever that was. Instead of leaving it alone, I got angry and said, well, what about how I'm doing? Oh boy, <laughs> it's not going to go good. That was when she got really angry at me. She yelled at me for being selfish and making it about me. I tried to apologize, but she was too upset. She hung up. I, did it. I texted her the next day, and she didn't reply for hours. She said she had more important things to deal with than me right now. I think probably every woman listening to this is, is probably like, yeah, that's right. I tried calling her the next day. She didn't reply. Eventually, she replied that she needed to focus on her mom and she would call me in a few days. She did. She said she needed to take a break from things to help her mom. She didn't want to feel guilty about staying there, that her work was letting her take a temporary leave and that she didn't know what was gonna happen. As you can imagine, I didn't handle this well. I begged, I tried to change her mind, would text her every few days, I tried memes, a clean slate message, and everything seemed to make things worse. That's when I found your channel. I started watching your video hours every day. I finally felt stronger, strong enough to leave her alone. 
Yes, at first all I did was watch no contact videos. But then I realized I was a huge reason this fell apart. I knew that I had to do something. So I got your creative healing course. I tried to imagine my ex cheering me on. Every time I pictured our connection before the issues, I imagine her just encouraging me to stay motivated to grow like she would have done before. I would imagine her saying, okay, if you're really serious about changing, you need to sit down and be motivated. It really made me feel a lot better. I do 30 minutes longer if I had time. And if I had a rough night, I do it before bed. That's great to do and always review your answers. And we do have a playlist called Listen While You Sleep. I always forget to bring it up, but so many people over the years have told me they just put on our Listen While You Sleep playlist every night, helps them sleep better. They wake up, they have a bad dream, they have a nightmare about their ex. They hear us talking and they go back to sleep. So try that, see if it works for you. After about two months, she liked a text message I had sent her about six months ago. I think it was an accident. Yeah, I think that's a big sign that your ex is missing you and they start to go through old text messages. That's one thing that exes do. They look at your old pictures. They look at your old messages. I think she accidentally liked it and she probably didn't mean it and probably, I don't know if she tried to undo it, but he saw it. I also noticed she started watching my stories again and posted some memes and clips on Instagram. Okay, more signs. Here we have him. He sticks to no contact. He's leaving her alone. He's focusing on the personal growth. And look, now our behavior's escalating. Watching the stories again, memes and clips. All right, a little bit more here. She then messaged my sister asking how I was doing. My sister told her that she was really proud of how I am taking everything she said seriously and really committed to change. She said to just reach out to me. Okay, more of proof that she's thinking about him more. Behavior escalated, now she's reached out to the sister. About a month later, she finally did. She admitted she thought about me every day. This is not a surprise. I know it is when you're going through the breakup, but you've got to imagine this is what happens, okay? I see this all the time, and when you're on the, the side of it where this is just happening to you, your ex is being so cold and mean, it doesn't ever feel like it's going to get there. But when you do what I tell you to do and suggest, you see these kind of things happen, but not when you're reaching out to your ex and begging and pleading and handwritten letters and clean slate messages. They don't work. They often make this situation worse. All right, so about a month later, she finally did. She admitted she thought about me every day, that she was sorry for getting so angry that she wished I had originally gone to visit with her mom. I had to admit that I was sorry I had not, that I had been selfish and that I understood why she was angry. And then he put in parentheses, thanks creative healing course, LOL. Because we talk a lot about that in the creative healing courses, I think in particular section nine or 10. She admitted that when I started to leave her alone, she started missing me more and more. That all of the issues with her mom, her feelings over that, and me was just too much on her. She was going through a lot. We still don't know what's going on with mom, but we do know it's serious. And, you know, they were together a long time. She really cares about this guy, but, you know, she's frustrated and upset and She's got some avoidant tendencies. We don't know how avoidant she is. 
But we could see his anxiety play out through this. She said there were many days she wanted to reach out, but wasn't ready to deal with all the conversations or issues that would follow if she did. You see that, guys? That's important to understand. You have to understand there are many days that your ex does want to reach out to you and they don't because they know there are going to be conversations and, and complications from doing it. In that moment, they really do want to connect with you, but they feel like you may go back to the begging and the pleading and the manipulating and they aren't ready for all that yet. That's why you've got to really grow in no contact. So when they do come back, you don't make those other mistakes because I'm telling you guys, the people that are committed to the personal growth are going to be a lot more likely to turn it around. I guarantee it. You should see how many emails or coachings that I do that people just focus on no contact videos. Their ex comes back. They haven't really learned anything. All they've really learned to do is to stop reaching out to their ex. They haven't learned skills. They le haven't learned how to heal their attachment issues. They haven't learned how to communicate better. And if you don't believe me, go look at my views on my lowest watch videos. They're often the ones that are about communication or uh, like I put out this video recently about uh, the importance of fathers. Hardly anybody watched it. Think about it. All of you have fathers, or at least 99.99% .99 of you. Maybe there are a couple of you that don't, and there's some kind of medical miracle going on, right? But nobody's watching the important things because they're so obsessed about where their ex is at and what they're doing. The healthiest people, the ones that are most successful, are the ones really committed to the personal growth. And that's what I want for all of you guys. Because not everybody will hear from their ex and not everybody will get their ex back and not everybody's in a situation where they should go back to an ex. But bettering your life and being happy is like the ultimate goal. There's just a little bit more here. We talked for about 20 minutes. I said, look, I care about you and that she needs to make her mom a priority and I understood. She thanked me and said that she appreciates me being so understanding. She said that she has to take her mom in for some more tests soon and will let her know or let me know how it goes. She reiterated that she missed me and quote unquote us. That this has been hard on all of us. She's scared about her mom, but doesn't want to lose me too. And then he says, what do you think, Coach Craig? Well, there's a lot of good in this situation. Obviously, there's a lot going on with mom, and that's going to impact how this goes. I don't know what mom's health is like. I don't know how serious this is, if this is something where she could be potentially terminally ill. And then we'd have the loss of a mom here, which can be devastating, especially it sounds like it came on kind of suddenly here. Uh, and I understand because, you know, my mom had terminal cancer and it was very difficult to go through that. So I understand what this is like. Um, I think that, you know, this was all exasperated by mom and what was going on with mom and had mom's health issues not been an issue here, the relationship would have been okay. It was still would have had its struggles, but it doesn't seem like there was like any kind of breakup coming um, until the stress and uh, all the issues with mom here. So I do think she cares about you. I think that because you were strong and left her alone, she started missing you more and more. She admitted it. She admitted she was missing you every day. She doesn't want to lose you too. But don't push to go there. If she wants you to go there, say, you know, I will come. But if you're too eager now, it looks like, oh, now you want to come like she got upset about earlier. So I do think she's probably going to ask you to come if you're patient and you just keep showing that you're understanding and not pressuring her. You're going to have to implement all the skills and the strategies that you're learning and be a lot more patient and understand that depending upon what's going on with mom, that's going to impact what goes on with your connection. Okay. So just try and be 
supportive and loving and empathetic and kind and compassionate and just keep focus on the personal growth like you have been. I know that one of the things that you said that was really encouraging for you was imagining her kind of like being by your side, sitting down, encouraging you to do the work. Keep doing that. That's a great visualization. Um, and I have said something similar to people over the years. A lot of times people like the opposite. A lot of times people like to think of the haters, like the people that think, they like to think about the people that say, you won't get your ex back. You can't do it. They like to try and prove them wrong. But this is a not, kind of the opposite end of the uh, side of that coin right there, where it's, you're imagining your ex being loving and supportive to keep up the personal growth. Either work, really. Either can be a great way to keep you motivated. But I think you guys have a good chance of turning this around. It's just not going to be easy because we have a major person in her life's health at risk here. And I don't know what that is. So give it time. Keep up the hard work. She's missing you. Let her keep reaching out. Be supportive, but don't be too much and see how it goes. I think once you start to truly show the more confident behavior and all the skills that you're learning, it's going to kind of naturally repair itself, but there are going to be some struggles with her and mom, obviously along the way, and there's going to be some difficult moments and maybe conversations and maybe some depression on her end. And um, obviously she's going to be scared. So just prepare for all of those things and do your best and see how it goes. But there does seem to be a strong enough foundation here that this woman really misses you and loves you. And I think you're gonna hear from her soon, okay? So stay motivated. Now, if you wanna get my help personally, you could go to my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course and my workbooks there. That's the only places you can get them or my help personally. Watch out for scammers. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.